Mark, both these teams have been given up, you know, too many sacks recently. Do you feel like whichever team's quarterback is able to do what he normally does more that will probably have a big advantage? That's, you know, usually a pretty, pretty good indicator of, of success is, is, you know, keeping your guy in rhythm, uh, upright uh and and confident um you know i think both both quarterbacks have 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 really done a nice job of of staying confident and and staying in rhythm uh throughout kind of some of these 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 times when you 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 know whoever you are if you see the the stats that for these guys have taken you know taken too many shots for their respective teams and the first thing you can look at with with those guys is just their eyes and their feet you know quarterbacks eyes go down or they they start getting random uh their feet are out of rhythm and and that that you know, hasn't happened with Marcus at all. And, you know, it doesn't happen with, with Brett Hundley very much either. Molly in the back. Mark, do you feel like you could play with more tempo or, or more urgency? <laughs> could definitely play with more urgency. Uh, you know, we tried to, to, to go with more tempo last week. Last week was our, um, the time where we did the most of that, uh, to this point in the season. And then sometimes, you know, when you don't get anything out of first down it's tough to 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 tempo uh like we would you know like we would hope for uh but again that's that's part of part of the deal is 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 just being figuring out why we weren't efficient identifying it and fixing it and and over the last couple days our guys have done that oh just just following up on that is is that kind of the biggest uh indicator on whether or not you guys are going to do tempo is how you're doing on first down uh, yes and no. Um, you know, there's, there's so many things right now, whether it's some guys up front, some guys in the perimeter that, that, you know, you're, you're trying to, it's that kind of double-edged sword of you're trying to scheme everything perfectly versus just going, you know, and, 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 uh, we're kind of built, I think, to just go. And, and so, um, it's just that, that, that double-edged sword right now, with a little bit, a little of those schemes and, you know, philosophies are in conflict sometimes, but, uh, uh, you know, in general, you know, we might have two plays called, but if it's second and 10 and you're running a, you know, or second and 11 and you're running something that, that may, might not be the best thing to get to third and medium, you're, you're, you know, you're playing behind all night. Mark, do you see a lot of similarities between uh, Brett and, and Marcus? Can you compare and contrast the two? I think they're both outstanding players. I think they're, you know, I think they're different, but equally productive. Um, you know, obviously we're, we're, we're big fans of Marcus and, and he would be, he would be our guy regardless, uh, you know, had an opportunity to, to recruit Brett Hundley and he's a great, was a great kid. At the, at, you know, I, don't, I haven't, you know, gotten to know him as much over the years, obviously as, as Marcus, but he's a tremendous competitor. Uh, and, and seems like a, a, a great kid. Mark Byron has uh, five carries over the last two games. Uh, I was talking to Gary yesterday, and he said he wants his running backs to be able to break more tackles, and he thought Byron has been the best of the three at doing that. Are you guys looking at giving him more carries and putting him back in more of the traditional running back role that he ran for over 1,000 yards in last year? It, again, it's kind of an ongoing deal. You know, I think he's he's capable of, of being great at both, and – you know, kind of where where the game plan fits each week by by both how he's performing at at each spot, how the running backs are performing, and then how the how the wideouts fit together. You know, just from a from a, a personnel grouping standpoint, will define much of that. And then a lot of the time, uh, for whatever reason, over the past couple games when he has been at tailback, has been a time when the ball's been pulled a little bit more, uh, which is kind of just luck of the draw. Warren Williamson on the far right, Marks. You obviously put a lot of effort into the practice before the Arizona game. Now going into the UCLA game, have you seen an uptick in the guys in their effort and the way that they're approaching this game at all? And if so, what's it been like? I, th- I think if anything, we need to just work smarter. You know, work work. You know, with more intelligence. Our our effort, our pure straight effort in 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 training leading up to the Arizona game, and even our you know just gross effort was was really good. Our, our execution, our, you know, our football intelligence was lacking. And, and that's, again, on, on us first as coaches. And, and uh, you know, whether it's, you know, we had a situation where they scored twice on something we practiced a thousand times and we had two out of the three guys 
communicating great and one out of three not, and that's a touchdown, you know, and that's where, you know, our coaches are, are going back going, okay, how could we drill this better? How can we communicate this better? How, you know, how can we make this happen? And it's not, we blame this kid. That's not, you know, how we operate. It's how can we coach this situation better? We had a, you know, another situation where we checked to, to a coverage that wasn't in the game plan. That never happened in practice. You know, that I've, I've never seen that happen before. Uh, and, and so getting into the mind a little bit, of, Hey, what, you know, wh what made you do that? Uh, and, and getting that corrected is, is paramount. And then, and being, you know, again, smarter going forward. And have they responded? They have. Yep. They have. Molly in the back flex. How, how are players going to react after a sack or an interception or a touchdown or a, or a big play? Celebrate week? with their teammates. That's what they should do. Celebrate with our teammates. There's a lot, you know, as I said the other day, there's a lot of, a lot of subjectivity around the world of, of what those rules are. And I couldn't tell you what the answer is. Uh, but I do know that if you celebrate with your teammates, you're, you're right by the game and you're right by what we stand for. Andrew, right. What's been the you caught you talked about secret sauce for this program? What's been the secret sauce that hasn't let this team lose back to back games in so long? Oh seven, I think. What's the thing that has kept you guys from losing, basically letting one loss beat you twice, as you like to say? Well, I think I think our guys, our coaches, and our players know that everybody's in this together. It's not hey the you know whatever unit the punt return team was awesome and everybody else stunk. It was we won or we lost, and this is what we did well. Let's sustain that. This is what we didn't do well. Let's improve upon that and go win or lose. And, you know, identifying what it was in the game that, that was whatever miscommunicated, uh, not executed, ex you know, exactly perfectly and going forward and, and, you know, te tr treating and teaching those situations almost, almost identically. I think, you know, those guys know that we're here for them. We have their back and, and we're in this together. I'm going to butcher his last name, but 94 from UCLA. Oh, <coughs> Oa. Uh, yep. That's what you got to go with. Yep. Fenter's got it. Um, what do you see from him now that he's back from a hip, from a couple hip surgeries uh, at, at that end position? He looks like Javon Curse or something. I don't know. He's, I mean, a freak. Uh, great football player. They're, they're, their whole defense, you know, we, we tried to recruit almost every one of those guys, and, and they are phenomenally talented. I mean, the, the guys, uh, they're athletic at, at every level, very athletic. Uh, you know, the, the, the D lineman, like you're talking about, whether it's Vanderdose or McCarthy, uh, Clark, all the, all those guys are, are phenomenal athletes. Um, and they're, they're really big and strong too. So it's a, it's a tremendous challenge. Chantel on the right. Going back to a few questions ago, you have these issues on defense, and you said mental mistakes are causing a lot of them. How much harder is it to sort of diagnose those mental mistakes? <laughs> is it youth? Is it miscommunications? What? How hard is it to diagnose that? Uh, usually, you know that the the genesis of it is communication. You know, but then why does it happen that way? And how? You know, we always talk constantly, especially at home. Your communication happens with your eyes and your hands. You can't, there's no verbal communication, you know, on, on defense. And we practice that way. There's very little, very little verbal communication in, in, in practice. But in the game, it was a matter of, of one time, you know, one guy's locked in, got it, you know, he has his blinders on and two guys in their back doing a great job of communicating and doing, that's not communication. You know, that, that's, that's, you know, two guys communicating, one guy not. That's, you know, I was spoke yesterday. It's like, you know, your husband and wife and I'm supposed to take out the garbage and I never take out the garbage and, we don't talk, you know, that's, that's my responsibility, but we have to have to, you know, execute that in, in a, in a controlled environment first, which we, we have and will and continue to do. And then, and then make it happen on game day. Go ahead, for him. Um, at week seven, <laughs> that's extra. Yeah, right. Chantal. Um, at week seven in the season, are you seeing more of that crop up this year than maybe in years past? I think that happens again. That's, that's, you know, been the bane of existence for, for defenses. You know, that's why people run bunch routes and motion and, and do that kind of stuff is to, to make people communicate, to make people change their coverage or to make, and that's, you know, that's why, you know, some, some things happen like that. It's almost, you know, a lot of it is almost always communication. Aaron. 
Mark right. talked a little bit ago about uh, being disappointed in his fumbles and still trying to, you know, learn when to tuck it, when to keep, protect it, when to just run and whatever. Uh, how tricky is that for a quarterback to know when that clock goes off and you've got to just pretend you're a running back and protect it versus trying to make a play? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I mean, it's internal clock and, and the internal clock shouldn't go off quickly on a three man rush in that situation. You know, that that's where, uh, you know, again, Marcus is a, a great teammate and a great leader and he's going to take. He's going to take the the blame uh, in that in that situation, and and you know again we we've got to coach it better, we've got to scheme it better, we've got to have guys understand where their help is and where it's not. Uh, so kind of you know a combination of those factors, but definitely it, you know that that internal clock of quarterbacks and, and having that feel for both the the spatial awareness downfield and the spatial awareness of of where they operate is you know he definitely has it. Anything else? Oh. Brian? Mark, a lot of offensive linemen get to make their first start in late August, early September against an overmatched opponent and kind of ease their way into it. Your guys, some of them were thrown in against some pretty good players and defenses. How tough is that, and are you seeing um, them getting better each week? They're competing. You know, that's that's the, the, the first thing. Uh, you know, you, you don't want to see, you know, total frustration, any, any sort of a let down, any sort of a give up mentality. And we haven't had that. Not, not at all. You know, they've been frustrated and that's, that's a good thing. And, and, you know, they're competitive. Uh, they have improved in, in, in some areas, not to the, to the level that, that we expect our guys to, to play. And if you're, if you're in, you're our guy, you're our, you're our best guy. You're, you're the number one guy. Uh, and, and we expect them to, to, to play like it. But I think that whole unit is, is proud and, and, you know, is, is, they're, you know, looking forward and excited about a, a tremendous challenge that, uh, coming up this weekend. Colin, in the back, Mark, you guys in UCLA were overwhelming favorites in the Pac-12. Did you guys ever think that, you know, after six weeks in the season or six games that, you know, one of you would have two losses at this point? Well, I think in, you know, in – training camp and the the early media stuff that's that's kind of what all the coaches were talking about is how deep and talented and and you know the the players the schemes the coaches in this conference are it's they're it's exceptional right now exceptional anybody can beat anybody and you know we've we've seen that happen it was fun. what was it last week every road team won by less than a touchdown uh and that that's unfortunately a lot of those things have, have come to fruition but uh, you know, it should do nothing but, again, improve our laser-like focus on today and taking care of today and getting ready for UCLA. Uh, and then, you know, there's going to be so much shakeup across the country. Uh, it was funny a little bit on Saturday being able to watch some of those games. And within the same quarter, this one team was the greatest team ever in the history of football, and they stink. And then this coach is the greatest guy ever, and he's an idiot. You know, and, and somewhere in the middle, there's some some reality. But college football playoff is already – absolutely paid dividends for the for the media world and and you know i think we'll do nothing but refocus us on on our challenge ahead